Now, Rishi Sunak and Ben Wallace formally apologised in the Commons yesterday for the decades-long ban on LGBT people serving in the UK Armed Forces. Now, that was after the publication of a government commissioned review. Well, the Prime Minister said the ban, which lasted from 1967 to the year 2000, was an appalling failure of the British state, decades behind the law of this land. Uh, well, let's talk to Kevin Baisley, who's an RAF navigator uh, and joins us now to discuss. And I know, uh, I mean, you, you were forced to leave, weren't you, under this... Um, well, cloud isn't right. The, the, isn't the right way of putting it. Uh, what do you make of an apology? Does it make any difference? Well, uh, firstly, good morning. Um, and yes, so I was discharged or forced to resign back in 1995. This apology is is very welcome. It will make a difference to a large number of veterans who suffered under that ban. But it is very much overdue. Um, but it is it is welcome. So talk us through, Kevin, the journey emotionally to this point, because you have been waiting for this apology for decades, haven't you? And very sadly, it will be too late for some people, won't it? And for others who are still with us, it, it just won't be enough. Correct. Um, you know, the, the ban, as you say, started in 1967. So for some of those early people, impacted by the ban, it will be too late. They will never hear this apology. They will never get the compensation that they were due. The The state took our dignity. They took our integrity. They, they took our honor. And all we wanted to do was serve our country. Um, so this apology goes some way towards recovering that integrity, honor, and, and dignity for us. Um, some people will never accept that apology. They have just been so disenfranchised by what the state did to them. Has there ever been an explanation as to, uh, you know, a, a decent explanation as to why, despite the fact it was, you know, from that, from the, you know, was it late 60s onwards, it, it, it was no longer a criminal offence, um, but the armed forces right up until the turn of the century still decided it was not appropriate for them? They, they used throughout that time various arguments about it being uh, incompatible with military duty, that soldiers, sailors and airmen wouldn't serve with known homosexuals next to them in on board ships, in planes, in the trenches. Um, the most common one was the oxymoron that someone who was gay was a target for blackmail and could be turned against the country without actually acknowledging that if we were allowed to be ourselves and be open, we wouldn't be a blackmail target. Yeah, that's a very good point. How do you feel like attitudes have changed within the armed forces towards the LGBTQ plus community? I, I've been lucky enough to do some work with the Royal Air Force's um, DNI teams, and um, I'm one of the first to acknowledge that they have made huge progress since the year 2000. Um, you know, all of the UK Armed Forces are now seen as employers of choice for the LGBT community, and as I say, they have made great progress, um, and that just shows the advantage of good leadership, good communication, good education. Um, and but they they mustn't forget their history. And that's what's important about this review is learning from the lessons of the state sanctioned abuse that happened to us. Um, and that's where Lord Etherton and his review team have done such an excellent job with this review paperwork. Is, is it right? Am I right in thinking you would be dishonorably discharged back in your time? I. I was administratively discharged. I was I was ordered to resign my commission, even though I I pointed out the um, the fact that um, it's not really a resignation if I've been ordered to do it. But uh, they didn't really accept that argument. Um, and uh, but many others were um, yeah they were discharged dishonorably. Some of them were imprisoned. They left with criminal records. Some of them were put on sex offenders registers. You know, there was state sanctioned medical abuse that would be considered torture today on some of those people who were forcibly examined by doctors. Well, 
It's, I mean, thank heavens that's come to an end. And as you say, this apology is a step in the right direction. But clearly when it comes to some sort of compensation, more needs to be done. Kevin, it's good to talk to you this morning. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.